a recent report released by the Classification Office found our young people are learning about sexual violence from media. Not only that, they are watching more of it, and it's shaping their attitudes to sex, relationships and sexual violence. However, they don't or can't talk to parents about it, even if they've had bad experiences. To tell us more about the report and what parents can be doing, please welcome to the cafe Chief Censor David Shanks. Nice. Good to have you here, David. Oh, Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, welcome to the show. Oh, this Thank is you. a fascinating topic for me, particularly having those three boys in this target demo age group. It's over 11, mm. 14 and 16. Um, the report sounds pretty terrifying as a parent. I mean, what age were the kids that you surveyed from? We uh, surveyed a wide range of teenagers all throughout New Zealand, all across the country, different demographics, aged from 13 to 18. So 48 teenagers giving us a really deep insight into, into what they're viewing. And speaking of that deep insight, we kind of know that kids will watch inappropriate content, but what was new in this report for you? Look, there was a number of key takeaways for me as Chief Censor. Um, teenagers were saying, look, actually you can put a rating on a show or a TV series or a film. We won't necessarily um, respect that, but we'll pay attention to it. We'll see what the rating is and we want to know why you gave it that rating. So. One of the key things was the note in there as to what's in this is important to teenagers. This is the thing too, and also with um, passwords, if kids learn your password pretty quickly, they can be watching things on Netflix that they shouldn't be watching, uh, but they want to watch it because they think, they think it makes them cool. I mean, what are our kids telling us in this report that we're not aware of? I think one of the other key uh, takeaways from this report is that teenagers are saying, look, we're watching all sorts of content on all sorts of different mm. platforms. Um, and if you've got controls at home, that might not necessarily operate when they're at their friend's house or whatever. Um, but they are saying, look, we're actually not talking about this even amongst ourselves in terms of what we, we're seeing. And we value the opportunity to actually talk about this. So the, the, the teenagers involved in our study actually took great value in the opportunity to talk about what they were seeing and, and think about that. And I guess as Chief Censor that's really important because you can have all the parameters but you need them to discuss it, don't you? So how do we bridge that gap? Any suggestions? Look, I think there's some real key takeaways from even recent events like the 13 Reasons Why series that mm. you know had a big impact in this country and across the world. Um, that was a show mm. that covered a lot of you know, hot spots in terms of teen life. Um, and I did a bit of a spot check with some um, hundreds of teenagers actually doing during our Sensor for a Day program. And 85% plus of 16 year olds that I spoke to had seen that show. That provides an opportunity for parents to go, uh huh, this show is on. Actually, my teen is quite likely to see it. Mm. I should watch that and actually talk to my child about it. That's what I did. Exactly that yeah, same great thing. Great opportunity. Mm, it and, was. And how much has your job changed? I mean, you look at YouTube now, 300 hours uploaded every single minute. That is a lot of content coming in from around the world. And I guess the role of the Chief Censor has changed a lot. So what, you know, how do you handle that? Yeah, look, the, the whole industry has been disrupted and I've been talking to industry people about exactly that. And um, I think increasingly the reality is it's more about information and providing opportunities for particularly young people to be resilient and for parents to understand actually what it is that, that their children are viewing so that they can have that rich discussion and dialogue. Mm. That's, that's much more a, a focus going into the future to deal with that level of content. So how do we actually teach them then to question what they're watching? <laughs> that's what Mel needs to know. Or think, yeah. or think mm. maybe if they're too young for something that maybe they, how do you make them realise mm. that that's not appropriate what they're watching? Well, I think, again, you take an opportunity as a parent, as, as you did, where you've got a show that they're watching, you watch it, maybe not even necessarily with them, but you make sure you're watching it so you can pick out those points to have those conversations. Mm. And we are looking to provide, um, to build up a simple guide for parents to, to have exactly Good. those sorts of conversations <laughs> because parents need it. And we, we think we can control what they're watching, but we can't. No. A lot of no. the time. It's hard. And okay, so, so you, you're doing your bit. What sort of other support is there within the community, within the country, to help parents you know, navigate that tricky situation? Look, there's, there's a lot of support and agencies working in this area. NetSafe is providing you know, a, a great um, series of products and guides for parents to, to help 
um, to help them as parents of teenagers and help teenagers themselves. Um, and so we're looking across the board and also at educative possibilities, right. you know, wh how can we build it into our education syllabus that, uh, that, that kids will have this uh, mm. savvy, resilience, ability to manage what they're seeing. Because they have access to it, we just have to teach them to understand what it is. Um, and every day yeah. it seems almost they're getting more access to things, doesn't it? It's just like a, a daily thing. Your job must be extraordinary. It is. It's, it's really challenging, it's really interesting. I've got a question for you. Uh, yeah. So when you're in the movies, censoring movies obviously, do mm. you sit there with a clipboard and tick things off? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a special purpose designed clipboard with a little light and a, a full setup for, for reviewing movies. And look, also while you're here, I've, I've been always curious, what's your barometer for decency in terms of where other countries sit? Is New Zealand a bit more liberal? Is it down to you? How do you judge what's appropriate and what's inappropriate? It's, it's really interesting looking at the international comparisons because it's right across the map in terms of you know international perspectives and uh, New Zealand has its own kind of um, angle on things in terms of um, our tolerance for language and nudity for example might be a little bit higher than in some countries mm. but our tolerance for violence and in particular sexual violence is, is not so high right. so right. You know, it, it's reflected in our culture. Big that's job, yeah big job. That's fascinating, I could actually yeah. talk to you for a lot longer about Same. this. Um, I'm looking forward to those guidelines. That yeah, awesome. you, booklet, you just sent it this way, I could we'll de definitely deal with it, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Great. Oh, that's some really great advice from David um, and a much needed conversation to be had as well I think.